be fun, folks. David Hilter with us from Susquehanna Financial Group. And what I think a lot of people don't know, you're one of the rare birds that has been on both sides of the street, the buy side managing money and also recommending stocks and talking to people on the sell side. Um, very few people do this. You were with Putnam for years, managing their financials group and, and doing financial uh, mutual funds. This debacle we've been through, could you have survived as a mutual fund manager? I mean, this well, has been carnage, hasn't right. it? If, if you're uh, running a mutual fund, you're running against a benchmark. So your goal is to do better than the benchmark. Right. Uh, and so even if the benchmark is down, and your clients understand that, that's why they've invested with you. They've not invested in a hedge fund where your goal is absolute performance. Mm -hmm. They've invested in a mutual fund that's focused on a particular strategy, and your goal as a money manager is just to try to do better than that benchmark. And now you're on a different side of the world where yes, all they want to know is, what did you do yesterday? That's and right. what can you tell me? To do today. Tell me about short termism in the sell side. Is it too just short a term view? Well, in the end, the sell side will talk about what the clients want to hear about. So if I'm you... shocked. That's a break exclusive. <laughs> right there's a break exclusive. Go ahead. But if, if your hedge fund clients are looking for relatively short term investment ideas, you need to provide those. Mm -hmm. And you need to have some insight on the short term. Look, I think all of the markets have come to a much shorter view uh, than when either of us started yeah. in this business. I think I was just told I was a fossil. Uh, let's look at this chart. This I like. Branch Bank on the range, the Keith Buryat Index, the Bank Index. Over we go. We've been in the trading range noodling along. Everybody says David Hilder cuts in uh, investment banking. I don't buy it. I think there's got to be cuts in retail, too. Will we see cutbacks from having a branch bank on every corner? Sure. There are really two very separate things going on. Yes. Uh, obviously, the third quarter was very tough in trading and investment banking. You know, you had trading revenues down 30 percent, investment banking fees down 50 percent. So if that continues, by the way, you know, in terms of your former guest, if Europe doesn't solve its problems, then the capital markets are going to be in the ditch for a while and you, you will mm. have greater cutbacks at the investment banks. On the Main Street banking side, the commercial banking side, there's a different set of issues going on. Right now, the biggest problem for the Main Street banks is that interest rates are very low. And so they're not getting the kinds of spreads that they might have been built up for. And if the Fed is going to keep rates low for another two years, then that means, and you're seeing it now, bank managements are saying, well, we really need to try to harder mm -hmm. to be more efficient. Let's bring up, just for time, bring up the Volcker uh, piece, if you would, uh, Rex, that's as you can. Uh, this is David Hilder's note. I love how you can, this is classic <laughs> Hilder. Only in Washington could a simple idea uh, turn into a proposal that runs to 298 pages and asks, I love this, comments on 394 specific questions. The Volcker rule is, is not anything that Paul Volcker would recognize, is it? It's not. Uh, it was a simple idea. Uh, it has benefits. It has costs. But obviously what the regulators have found is that in order to preserve the market making function, you have to come up with very, very specific rules about what, what is the difference or how you define the difference between uh, market making, which would be okay, mm -hmm. and proprietary trading, which would Does not Citigroup be okay. Does Citigroup move their marginal employment to Zurich, London, and Hong Kong? You can't really do that. And obviously, the regulators in the U.S. would want to make sure that you can't do that. I think that's one of the, the clear points of that rule. By the way, the lawyers who really look at this uh, have said it's not just 394 questions. Many of those questions are multiple part questions. Uh, right. And so there are a thousand or even 1,400 different pieces. Sounds like CFA level two. Is it one in three? Is it one and two? Is it one, two, three, four? Or is it just five? And you look and there's no question five. Your single best buy, Bank of America, because they don't own anything in Greece? Is that one of the reasons? <laughs> Their Greece exposure is extremely limited. Bank of America has by far the best commercial banking franchise in the United States. It has the best retail brokerage business in the world, and it has one of the top three investment banking and trading franchises in the world. Why can't Mr. Moynihan get any love then? Um, he has he inherited a lot of problems. Look, obviously, the countrywide acquisition was not a success. Um, there were a lot of lurking liabilities in the mortgage-backed securities that countrywide sold to everyone. Uh, it takes time. I mean, none other than yeah. Warren Buffett has said it's going to take time. 
uh, but there is a great franchise there, and he understands how to run it. Straw hats and winner. Bring up the chart here. Moynihan right size is first. 30,000 people. Are other banks going to follow? Maybe not that size of number, but the scale or that, that sense of we've got to, you know, I love these words, right size. Synergize. Right. Again, if you're facing two years of interest rates at the current level and net interest margins at the current level mm -hmm. or maybe even a bit lower, uh, you're going to get a big uh, tailwind from improving credit quality that will help earnings, but you still need to make sure uh, that you can, <clears throat> that you're not spending too much to gather deposits and make loans. If Bank of America traded at the value, valuations, whatever metric you want to use, of the House of Diamond, where would that put the share price? Have you ever done that exercise? Um, you, you could look at it either in terms of earnings or in price to book, but I think you would say that the stock would be up 30 to 50%. Up how much? 30 to 50 percent. 30 to 50 percent would get it back to a J.P. Morgan. Right. Why is their retail effort superior to, to J.P. Morgan's? Well, again, Bank of America has the old Bank of America franchise in California. Uh, it also has the old Fleet Boston franchise in Boston. You may criticize Ken Lewis for a lot of the acquisitions he made, but he bought quality franchises around the country. Uh, I have, I don't know when you've last been in California, but if you go into a Bank of America branch in California, it's busy. There mm -hmm. are lines. There are lots of people in there doing business, and it's right. more crowded than you'd see at many of the branches of other banks across the street. David, exaggeration, but for 10 years and after the wonderful 60 Minutes piece with Mr. Jobs last evening, the banks compete away profits. That little yellow line down there is normalized back 10 years, Goldman Sachs, and the white line, okay, Apple's the the stock of the moment and there's a lot in between. Why should I own the banks if I can own something else? Maybe I don't get Apple, but I get an industrial or cat. Why should I own the banks? Well, the banks are at the core of the, the economy and the core of the financial system. I don't think you over time will have a healthy economy without a healthy banking system. The banks have endured enormous credit losses over the last couple of years and those as costs will begin to decline. Mm -hmm. um, and they're trading at incredibly low multiples. I don't know what the multiple on Apple is, but it can't be. It's not 56 percent right. tangible. It, it, it can't be less than than 15 or 20. And you can buy a lot of very high quality banks for single digit multiples right. of next year's earnings. Thank you. Let's do this again. David Hilder, thank you so much with Susquehanna.